Hi, I'm Ben Pasco for learningsoftography.com and today I'm going to bring you an unboxing of the Axis Go smartphone water housing designed by Aquatech. So pretty excited when this arrived. Um, very first impressions are it's quite a bit bigger than I expected. So it's designed for an iPhone 7, not the 7 Plus. That one should be available in August, I think. Um, they're, they're doing another one for the 7 Plus, but this is for the iPhone 7. So also fits the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6S, not the plus sizes, just the standard ones. But there's a couple of caveats. Um, you, the lens on the iPhone 6 and iPhone 7 doesn't quite line up. So um, there's a couple of accessory lens ports that I'll get to in a moment, um, which won't work with the iPhone 6 and 6S, but they will work with the iPhone 7. So let's get into this. I've been waiting for this for a little while. It's been uh, teased for a long time on Aquatex um, Instagram and the Instagram of uh, people like Zach Noyle and Ray Collins and uh, uh, several high profile surf photographers. So based on that it seems to be something that people are after. And I got quite a good response when I, when I put a post up about it before they'd released it, before there was any photos out. Um, so I made my own little uh, um, artist impression of what it might look like. Um, right, so first things first, I've opened the top. Um, I have had a, a look at this before, so I've read the, the box and things like that. I've actually downloaded the manual online, which I suggest you do too if you've ordered one, because um, there's lots of tips there, which um, no doubt they'll be covered somewhere in this box, but uh, it's good to get a heads up on those. I've also got, just before I open this up, I've also got the pistol grip attachment, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, this isn't obviously the official packaging for the pistol grip. Um, I don't think they've got as far as, as getting the official packaging together for that one yet, but if you order one, I'm sure it'll arrive in a nice kind of blister pack like this one. So let's get into it. All right, bit of plastic. Okay, so it's very nicely packaged, not going anywhere. Let's lift it out, see what you get. All right, so this kind of folds away. There's a little bit of plastic in there, which which I guess stops it latching shut when it's in the packaging, so it's not putting any pressure on the O-ring. Let's get rid of that. And that's got something in the bottom there. So here's the actual housing itself. Let's come on to that in a second. Uh, right, how do I get into this? Looks like there's a few other bits and pieces. So, there we go. We've got Axis Go sticker that down there and be recycled and uh, what else we got here got a little pouch with a wrist lanyard that's useful uh, reading in the instruction manual it suggests not using the wrist lanyard in surf um, just uh, in, to use a um, an Aquatech um, splash I can't remember what they call it now um, leash or something sports leash maybe um, instead um, this is for flat water and stuff. But um, to be honest, I use a, a very similar one on my um, Liquid Eye C6000 for the, for the A6000 camera that I use. Um, I haven't any problems, so we'll see. We'll see about that one. I've got a couple of leashes as well. Nice neoprene pouch, that's cool. It's got like netting at the bottom, so I'll let any water out if, you, uh, if you're putting this away when it's still a bit damp. Got a drawstring at the top. Nice, nice and simple. Keeps it all in there. Spec that would be fine for um, the standard port, which is this one. The wide angle port, which is a bit, bit different, but very similar size. But it probably won't fit in the six inch dome port, which is also available or coming soon, I think, for this system. So handy, keep that there. Right, right, let's have a quick look at this then. So there it comes in three colors. There's this color which is um, sunset orange, I think they call it, which I reckon is the best color because you, uh, you can see it more easily if you drop it, basically. Um, it says in the manual it, it doesn't float, so it will sink um, if you let go of it. So another reason to use your lanyard or your leash. So the other colors are, there's like a, a green color um, and there's a white color. So I'd go for the, the orange or the white personally, but you might, you might want to go for camo if you're uh, trying to hide from fish or something. 
So, right, I'm just opening it up. We've got nice orange O-ring all the way around there, seated in a groove, that's not going anywhere. Quick look, don't, no, no debris or anything on it at the moment, that's good. We've got, uh, on the housing itself, there's like a, oh, there's like a, ah, sorry. <laughs> That little bit of silicone glue stuff is just to hold this in place, which I can now get rid of. So, right, that's your safety information and your initial water testing. So interestingly, um, this back part of the housing is like, I was, I was interested to see what this feels like. It's like, um, what would you call it? It's like like a transparency, if you, ever, if you use a, I'm showing my age, but if you ever use an overhead projector, um, then it's like that kind of thin, plasticky um, material. It's almost like a skin of a drum or something. Um, totally see-through, which is really good because you're gonna take advantage of that when you're using the um, rear-facing camera, like the selfie camera. You can shoot straight through this plastic, so that's all right. Um, it's quite chunky, look, it's, it's recessed by a good centimeter or so. That that um, thin plastic. Um, and I guess that's just to get, make sure there's the O-ring seated really well. Um, there's like rubber bumpers in here to keep your phone in place. Um, and there's a like a little rubber, this little bit on the inside of the lens is like a rubberized bit which will form a nice seal around the, ca um, around the camera lens bump on the back of your iPhone. So that'll prevent any sort of reflections. Interesting to see what they do with the uh, iPhone 7 Plus, which has two camera lenses. I think it's got like a bump, which is like elongated. So I'm not sure what they're gonna do with that. Be interesting to find out. Uh, presumably it's gonna be very similar because they wanna use these same lens ports on, on all of the different housings that they do. Um, at the moment, there's just this one type, which is, as I said, designed for the iPhone 7, but also you can use it with the 6 or the 6S. Right, so these, um, this main body is, is like a nice solid plastic material. Uh, that's metal on around the outside there of this lens port. It's like, it's a thick glass um, lens port there, which is, it's um, optically correct and, and all that good stuff it says on the packaging somewhere. Um, these top bits, well the top bit and the bottom bit, the bits that are kind of bolted on with these star bolts. Um, so you might need a special bit to get this off. Don't know why you'd want to get it off though. Um, doesn't go all the way through, so you, I guess you could remove it if you wanted to reduce the weight a bit perhaps, because these are actually um, metal. So I assume that's like anodized aluminium. Um, these controls are stainless steel. There's two physical buttons on the bottom, um, which correspond to your volume keys on your iPhone. And um, that's important because you can use that with the pistol grip in order to trigger the shutter, take your photo. Uh, which makes, which is, which is like the unique selling point for this particular housing. Um, there's a couple of reasons why you go for this one over other ones, but I'll get into that. So yeah, really impressed. The obviously, as as expected from Aquatech, everything looks great. The finish is great. The packaging's great. Nothing looks like it's going anywhere. So let's try this locking mechanism to seal it up. So you just kind of pull this clamshell style case together and then hopefully it'll do it and it'll be a nice audible click in a second. Hmm, not that audible, that might be because I was fudging it a bit. Oh, okay, ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> I was doing it too slowly for effect. So there's a little button here, which, um, so it's locked at the moment, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's nice and chunky. So you can get your hand around there Use that one-handed, I guess, if you like. If you're shooting, you'd be pressing the shutter release on the back of the iPhone um, if you were shooting one-handed like this. That's definitely possible, I reckon. So if you didn't want to go for the, I think it's $99 for the pistol grip attachment, perhaps if you're not doing too much surf photography, it's more um, just taking it on, on holiday, on vacation, taking it to the pool or the lake or, or something where there's not you don't need to swim at the same time as taking photos, which is the main reason why you'd want to do um, have a pistol grip, um, then you can definitely do it one-handed. But big benefit of the volume controls is that pistol grip, so I'll set that up in a second. Let's get the phone in there. So to unlock it, you just 
press that button in and it clicks off nicely. Um, nothing, that, no problems I can foresee there. All looks pretty straightforward. Um, there's like a bit of a metal backing to the home button. That's probably, probably to make it, make sure it works more effectively underwater. Cause I heard or I read rather that you can get um, a bit of uh, interference from the water on the back if the case, if this plastic bit is quite close to the phone. Um, and you can actually force it a bit closer to give yourself more sensitivity above water. Um, it explains all this in the manual, so I'll put a link to the, the manual below. Um, there'll be a link to a blog post which will have all these details in there. So, right, let's put it in. So, I've already set up, set up my phone so that I've turned off the, um, the fingerprint reader thing. I can't remember what that's called on iPhone, but um, um, that's all off. Uh, I've turned off the um, passcode and stuff as well. So I'm just gonna drop it in. It just fits really snugly on those. Um, oh, fits nicely on top of these little bumpers, these little rubber bumpers. You can't really go wrong. Just making sure it's seated well. So you have to push it down a little bit just to make sure it's all level, but that, so that fits nicely. And you can see the gap around the iPhone which obviously is necessary for the, in this area for these um, controls. And if you want a nice circular lens port, then you need quite a bit to get space there. And I suppose instead of wobbling in and, and coming really close to the phone along here, then you might as well keep it out. So I reckon that's why they've gone for um, a little bit of a bulkier design than some of the other ones for the iPhone 7. I'll compare that the size in just a second as well. Let's close her up though. So what they say is you kind of, as you're shutting this, you can either push your palm against this clear um, surface, or you can just push one finger, depending on how sensitive you want it. So let's try one finger. Yeah, I can feel the phone straight away. Let's clip that up. There we go. Right, so check around the outside, make sure it's all even. There'll be a little gap there, but that shouldn't matter. They say to expect that. Okay, so it's super sensitive. So I can press the home, the home button. Well, now I've done it, <laughs> you're not gonna see, but that was really sensitive. So let's try opening up um, one of these apps. I'm gonna go for Lightroom. Okay, so there's a bit of a gap between this clear transparency stuff and the phone touchscreen itself. Um, and like they say, I guess that's important if you're going underwater and there's a bit of pressure exerted on this, or if a wave comes over and hits it, you don't want it to press it. It's a problem I've actually had with, um, I've got this, this very cheap, um, it's like $15 silicone housing for my Samsung Galaxy S6. Um, I've used that with some success. It works fine above water, it's no problem. But um, as soon as a wave goes past, if you're shooting a video, then it pauses the video. Um, and if you're trying to shoot stills then um, it just kind of messes up the whole thing it's like you're pressing everywhere like trying to focus or something so this is a like a silicone flexible silicone style cover um, and this is like like I say like a skin of a drum kind of thing so I've set it up with um, one of my photo apps which is Lightroom and I'm going to try and focus on there you go I can't really Okay, let's take a photo there. Let's try with the, cool. So one of the reasons I've gone for this Lightroom app is because it's got manual controls um, and you can take raw images. Um, you can also obviously use the native camera app on an iPhone that you're used to using. Um, and that one's useful because you can shoot video with it as well. You can't actually shoot video inside the Lightroom app, I don't think, or many of the, the pro or, uh, more advanced camera apps. They don't give you the option to shoot with, uh, to shoot video. But what I can do with this one is, hopefully, I can change the shutter speed pretty easily. I'll, I'll show you another app that I quite like. I've just dropped the shutter speed right down to a quarter of a second. So that works okay, but it's quite fiddly because the Lightroom app, especially, you've got to, you've got to pull, push your finger along this one little bar. Um, so what I want to show you actually, I'm going to try it out myself. I'll go to home. 
There's an app called Focus. Oh, what I've done there is a 3D press. Um, so on the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus, I think, if you press really hard, it's like a, a different type of press to just a tap. Um, so what's happened there is it's given me a shortcut to take a photo or take a selfie. So I don't want to do either of those things. So let's tap it this time. Oh man. There, yeah, I got it in the end. So I might, you can actually disable 3D press. Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, 3D, or whatever it's called. Um, I might disable that when I'm using it in the C because I don't want that to happen if I can help it. So right, why do I like this one? If you, <laughs> I've just said I might disable it. Do you know what's good on, on in the focus app? If you, if you 3, 3D press or whatever it's called on there, it turns it to shutter priority mode. So now um, the app's called focus. So as you can imagine, it's gonna be quite easy to focus. So if you swipe up or down vertically, you get these um, focus peaking. So it highlights the um, edges where it's in focus. So I just wanna set the automatic focus to quite far away. That's what I'll normally be doing. And then shutter speed is a, is a horizontal swipe. So it's, that's a thousandth of a second. So thousandths of a second shutter priority, that's a pretty good, standard um, setting for action shots in the surf I found. Um, really looking forward to trying this out in the sea. I haven't actually had the iPhone 7 out in the sea yet. I um, have used an iPhone 5S in the sea and I've used my Samsung in the sea. So um, I'm pretty um, up to speed with, with uh, the limitations and what you can do and what you can't do with them. Um, so that, that looks good. I think I'll probably be using the, the Focus app to give me that flexibility with a faster shutter speed for action shots and, and um, empty waves, making sure I freeze the action in the wave. Um, for your average um, normal shots, I guess, whether you're not, you're not trying to freeze fast action or you're not trying to do slow shutter speeds, then um, the regular app will probably be my choice. So the native camera app, let's try that. There you go, so that works fine as well. So both of, uh, but the Focus app, um, the Lightroom app, which is free, Focus costs like $2 or something, and the native camera app all allow you to use these buttons, these shutter buttons to release the, the shutter, these volume buttons to release the shutter. So, talking of which, let's put this on. I had a sneak little peek in it earlier, so I know that the hardware they've supplied to attach it is just a regular, um, a crosshead bolt, so I don't need a special Allen key or anything. Right, not done this before, so let's try make sure this is all self-explanatory, I'm sure. There we go, that lines up nicely. Hmm. Okay, let's just pop it in. So, if I go like that. So you got a little recessed holes for the bolts. This is nice and lightweight, obviously. Not much to it. It's like a resin plastic material. Let's line that up. And then it screws into this aluminium plate on the bottom. Get my screwdriver out, matching screwdriver. It's almost like I planned it. So a few twists, oh, there we go. And my screwdriver's actually a little bit small for these bolts, so I won't tighten up too much in case I start stripping the, the top of the bolt. But let's make sure it works. Yeah. I'll tighten that before I actually take it in the seat. Okay. Okay, works fine. If I hold it down, that's 12, 25 shots I just took using this pistol grip, that's pretty cool. All right feels obviously quite top heavy, but I'm used to that. Um, I like that the, the grip, the pistol is actually, or the trigger rather is as close as possible to the actual phone that stops, limits the amount of shake. Um, so one thing I've noticed when I'm taking photos with the iPhone is my, I get my fat fingers in the shot. So this kind of bulky lens port is gonna help avoid that I think. I'm just gonna have to be Maybe I'll shoot left-handed. Yeah, I mean, if you're left-handed, you're in luck because you've got this big right-hand grip like you have on your um, DSLR or your mirrorless camera, and then you've got the, your trigger there. But I'm gonna get used to it. 
The idea is you use it one-handed, so you can swim with this hand. Shoot photo of this one. It's pretty cool. I like it. Let's do a selfie. Uh, it's pretty good actually. It's really good. Okay, I'm happy. I'm happy. This is look. This is looking good. I think that's nearly all there is to show you. And what I want to do now is just screw off this lens port. I don't think there's any special. No. So it's just standard thread so you turn it anti-clockwise to take it off so there's a bit of resistance um because there is a couple of o-rings in here or maybe there's just one o-ring we'll find out in a second so i've just noticed actually on the front they've got you've got your tripod size thread there um forgive me i can't remember what the what that's actually called and then you've got slightly smaller threads next to it that might well be a standard thread size for all i know um, same on the bottom it looks like and you've got these threads on the front which makes it look like so those those four threaded holes are lined up and you can get something in between them so that makes me think you could have some sort of frame built around it so um, you could put some some sort of more professional looking structure on here to hold other accessories so that bodes well for the future. Um, but at the moment, the accessories you can get consist of pistol grip and lens ports. So this is the standard lens port which comes in the package with your Axis Go. As you can see, there's, there's nothing, if you take this off, there's nothing to stop the water getting in. So obviously you're gonna need a lens port on there. Um, it gives you an idea of what, what the lens looks like in there. So you can get, um, there's a wide angle, um, and there's a, a, um, a six inch dome as well for kind of over under style shots. I'll put some photos up of that. So I guess the, there's just an O-ring there, which seat, again seats nicely in the groove. Don't need to worry about that. Just see where it squishes against. So it kind of fits against this side. That's, that's seems like a pretty sensible design. Can't see anything going wrong there. That's plastic that it threads into. So we've got to be careful not to strip any threads like you have to on, on anything that's screwing together. But this is like really nice quality feeling metal. So nothing gonna happen to that. I wonder if they, how easy it would be to replace the, um, the actual element, like the glass element, if you scratch it. You'd have to be going some to scratch it though because it sits in this kind of deep well underneath there. It's almost like a lens hood built in. So yeah, you'd have to be, um, pretty uh, unlucky to get a scratch on there. Um, right, so there we go. It works, it's good. I'm gonna have a full post up about um, what apps I use for it and um, all of the links to what, what you get and other accessories and where you can order one. Um, so you can get that through aquatech.net and I believe accessgo.com. Um, but learningsurfphotography.com, I'll have everything um, you need to know about the Axis Go system. So what I'm gonna look out for in my next video is uh, how it works in the sea, um, how it performs, whether there's any interference on the back, um, how much air you should push out of it before you seal it up, before you take it in, the uh, testing process, which seems a little bit more involved than I, than I thought because you can't test it too deep without a cam, without a phone in there, which makes sense now that I see it because it's quite flexible. And I'm gonna talk about uh, the different camera apps that you use and what kind of settings that you might wanna use on the Axis Go. And um, I'll talk about the different accessories and how they might, um, what kind of equivalent you might be able to use um, a different piece of equipment for. And I think that's about it. it looks great, definitely a polished piece of equipment and very happy to take this out in the water once I've tested it naturally. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. I think I should be able to get some good shots with this. So Axis Go, iPhone 7, housing with pistol grip and standard port. Full video coming soon with my first impressions and some sample shots and uh, I'll let you know all about it. Thanks very much.